Strength and hypertrophy are different adaptations. They are closely related to one another, but ultimately aren't the exact same outcome. However, it has been hypothesized that performing strength style training can potentially result in greater long-term muscle growth. In this video, we will explore whether or not this may or may not be true. First, we need to understand the difference between strength and hypertrophy adaptations. Strength refers to how much weight we can lift, where the goal is to lift more weight over time. Ultimately, strength can be considered a performance outcome, meaning it is a display of a physical quality. Hypertrophy, on the other hand, is different from strength in that it refers to muscle growth. Hypertrophy isn't about how much we can lift, it is about growing bigger muscles, usually for aesthetic purposes. So ultimately, hypertrophy is a structural adaptation, not a performance outcome. While these two adaptations are closely related, training to maximize each goal is slightly different. Strength follows the principle of specificity. This means we want to train in a similar way to the performance task that we are trying to accomplish, which in this case is lifting the most amount of weight for a single repetition. So to maximize strength, trainees want to train the specific lift that they want to get stronger at through competition standard range of motion with heavy loads and lower repetitions. Hypertrophy, on the other hand, doesn't follow the principle of specificity, since there is no performance goal. Rather, hypertrophy is about maximally stressing the target muscle to induce a muscle growth response. Without going into too much detail, this is generally best achieved by training close to failure with strict full range of motion technique in moderate rep ranges with high volumes. While these are certainly different training goals, strength and hypertrophy seem to be very closely related. For example, this study analyzed the relationship between maximal strength and muscle mass in highly trained powerlifters. And as we can see, there was quite a clear relationship between load lifted and lean body tissue for the squat, bench press, and deadlift. And these results are fairly intuitive. It is no surprise that strength athletes in heavier weight classes are stronger than the athletes in lighter weight classes. The most obvious explanation for this is due to having a larger body frame, allowing them to carry more muscle mass. So I think it makes sense that having more muscle mass clearly allows you to lift more weight, with all other factors equated. However, we also need to understand that this is a very specific population performing very specific training. These athletes are all very skilled and efficient at the power lifts. Lifters who are focused purely on muscle growth probably aren't going to be as skilled at these lifts in most cases, because they probably aren't performing the power lifts with power lifting technique with heavy loads. So if we assess the relationship between strength and muscle size in different populations, the relationship isn't as linear. We can see these discrepancies when looking at highly trained lifters and athletes. We often see lighter weightlifters and powerlifters lifting heavier loads than bodybuilders who clearly have more muscle mass than them. This is because there are other factors influencing strength too, such as neural efficiency, technique, peaking strategies, muscle architecture, and our inherent anatomical structure. So I think it is most accurate to say that having more muscle mass increases your strength potential. It doesn't always mean that a bigger muscle is stronger, but it means that with all other factors equated, it most likely will be stronger. So what this data suggests is that hypertrophy will probably contribute to strength gains. Growing more muscle mass in the prime movers of a lift will be helpful to lift more weight over time. In fact, this is probably the biggest contributing factor to long-term strength gains after technique and neural efficiency have been close to maximized. The primary way that lifters get stronger after neural and technical efficiency has been close to maximized is via an increase in muscle size over time. And this makes logical sense. Bigger muscles have more total contractile tissue to contract and produce force. And once we teach this new muscle mass to produce high forces via specific heavy lifting, trainees will likely be able to lift more total weight than previously. So it is pretty clear that muscle growth will be beneficial for strength gains. But what we want to know is if the opposite is true. Is getting stronger beneficial for long-term muscle growth? There are three ways we can look at this question. First is via the impact of phasic structure. This refers to implementing phases of pure strength training followed by phases of pure hypertrophy training. 
The rationale here is that getting stronger will allow you to lift heavier loads, which is true. This would then allow you to perform more reps or load in your subsequent hypertrophy phases, which would then hypothetically promote a superior hypertrophy stimulus compared with performing pure hypertrophy training alone. However, does this actually occur in practice? There are two studies exploring this question, which each found conflicting results. First is this study, which had trainees perform either a pure hypertrophy routine or a strength phase before a hypertrophy phase. The pure hypertrophy group performed four sets of 8-12 to 12 reps of the back squat and leg press to failure three times per week for eight weeks. The phasic group performed the same routine, but trained with 1-3 to three reps in the first three weeks, then followed by 8-12 to 12 reps for the remaining five weeks. It was found that after the first three weeks, quad hypertrophy was greater in the hypertrophy only group, as expected. However, at the end of the 8-week intervention, quad growth was greater in the group incorporating a strength phase first, suggesting that strength training potentiated subsequent muscle growth. However, another study found different results. This study explored the effects of strength and hypertrophy phases in different orders. One group performed the following strength routine for 6 weeks, followed by the following hypertrophy routine for another 6 weeks. And the other group performed the same training protocols, but in opposite order. Hypertrophy first, followed by strength. And at the end of the 12 weeks, there didn't seem to be any noticeable differences between groups, and if anything, there seemed to be a slight trend in favour of performing the hypertrophy phase first. Although, this study didn't actually compare a strength and hypertrophy phasic structure to a pure hypertrophy program. It just compared the same phases in different orders. So, this study didn't really specifically answer the topic of this video. So, while we have mixed findings, I don't really think there is enough evidence to be confident that a phasic approach to strength and hypertrophy training will result in greater long-term muscle growth compared with pure hypertrophy training alone. However, I would remain open to this being a true phenomenon until more research helps us form a clearer understanding. Another way we can look at this question is through periodization. Periodization can generally be described as the long-term planning and management of training. It is well established that periodization is an important concept for peaking our strength, but probably doesn't influence muscle growth in the same way. This was established in this meta-analysis, which analyzed the body of evidence on the effects of periodization versus traditional non-periodized training on muscle growth. It was concluded that specific periodization models don't seem to influence muscle growth compared with non-periodized training when volume is equated. What this suggests is that focusing on different qualities, whether that be strength or any other training quality at different periods of time, doesn't seem to promote greater muscle growth compared with sticking to a traditional hypertrophy only program. And the last way we can incorporate strength training into a hypertrophy program is by undulating our loads and rep ranges. This means we may perform one session with lower rep ranges for more of a strength focus, and perform higher rep ranges for other sessions for more of a hypertrophy focus. For example, we may perform the bench press in the 1-5 to five rep range for one session during the week, and then lift in the 8-15 to 15 rep range for another session in the same week. So, what does the evidence say about the effects of undulating rep ranges on muscle growth? The evidence on undulation usually finds no beneficial effects for muscle growth compared with performing the same rep ranges in different sessions. For example, this study explored the effects of traditional hypertrophy training versus undulating between strength and hypertrophy training. Trainees performed back squats and leg extensions for 12 weeks with either a traditional approach, performing each set with 8 reps, or with an undulating approach, where loads were undulated between sessions and also varied throughout the training program. It was found that after 12 weeks, quad growth was essentially the same between groups. So it seems that undulating between strength and hypertrophy training probably doesn't have any additional benefits compared with performing hypertrophy training alone. So overall, it seems that strength probably doesn't contribute to hypertrophy in the same way that hypertrophy contributes to strength. Future research may find strength can have a small positive effect on muscle growth, but it would likely be a very small positive effect. 
Furthermore, there is potential that strength can have a positive effect on muscle growth over long-term timeframes, meaning a multi-year timeframe, but we just don't have research conducted longer than around 12 weeks. One rationale for these potential long-term benefits could be a result of training variation and resensitization. This is not a very well-established theory as of yet, but it is certainly possible that it could have positive effects on long-term muscle growth. The theory is that implementing phases of a different form of training to your usual hypertrophy routine, such as strength training, could resensitize you to hypertrophy training once again. So when you get back into pure hypertrophy training, you would theoretically see an elevated rate of muscle growth, as seen with newer lifters in the gym. And in the meantime, the strength training is enough to at least maintain your current muscle mass, so you aren't going to lose any muscle mass at any point. This would look something like this in practice. Let's say across a 12 month time frame, we perform 10 months of traditional hypertrophy training and two months focused on strength training evenly dispersed across the year. This theory would suggest that we are resensitizing our muscles to hypertrophy training and we will see an elevated rate of muscle growth on average throughout the year. In comparison, this would be superior than performing 12 months straight of pure hypertrophy training. It is difficult to say whether or not this is true because there simply isn't direct long-term evidence to confirm or deny this. But it should just be noted that this is a possible phenomenon that could provide a rationale for implementing strength phases for the purpose of muscle growth. Now let's say that this theory was true and that overall muscle growth was slightly superior from implementing the strength phases. The question then becomes, is it the strength training itself or is it just a result of training variation? If it is from training variation, then maybe we could achieve the same results from just changing exercises throughout the year, but still with a hypertrophy style of training. This would also provide a novel stimulus in theory and potentially result in greater muscle growth compared with performing the same exercises all year round. These are all hypothetical scenarios that we don't have direct answers to, but I just think they are worth mentioning and having a discussion around. Another reason why trainees may want to include strength training into their hypertrophy routine is if they have simultaneous goals. Many lifters aim to be both more muscular and stronger. Trainees will build strength over time with hypertrophy training alone, but you will never peak your true strength potential. This is because hypertrophy style training doesn't involve very heavy loads i.e. training in the 1-5 to five rep range, which is necessary to maximize neural adaptations and develop the technique required to lift maximal loads. Furthermore, you might not even choose to perform the lift that you want to get stronger at with a hypertrophy approach because you don't specifically need to include them to train the muscle you are targeting. So it is completely valid for trainees to implement strength training in their routines if they want to get stronger at a particular lift. We just need to be aware of the trade-offs and understand why we are implementing certain training methods. So there are a few potential theories and reasons that may support the implementation of strength training into a hypertrophy routine. However, we should also understand that there may also be some downsides too. More specifically, strength training generally induces greater joint stress due to the heavier loads lifted. This can increase our risk of joint pain and irritation, and potentially result in injury over time. This is especially true if we make a sudden change in our training routine that our joints and connective tissue are unaccustomed to. This is just an indirect effect that should be mentioned before jumping straight into strength-focused training. So what does all of this mean in terms of what we do in the gym? Well, it seems that strength training probably doesn't potentiate hypertrophy to any significant extent. It is possible that it can have a small positive effect or yield greater long-term gains, but I don't have a high degree of confidence that it will be more effective than hypertrophy training alone. However, for trainees who have simultaneous strength goals in addition to muscle growth, or just want to give this a go for themselves, it can definitely be something that you try. This can be implemented by either incorporating some strength exercises at the beginning of your hypertrophy workout, by undulating rep ranges and loads from session to session, or by implementing phases of pure strength training at various times throughout the year. However, just note that this will be more stressful on the joints and connective tissue, meaning you may not be able to handle as much volume compared with a pure hypertrophy program. 
Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Check out flowhighperformance.com for online coaching, training templates, ebooks and more.